All right, welcome to our prayer time Wednesday night. Good to welcome all of you on Facebook. And uh, you see Miss Debbie's here, and you don't see Doris and Jerome, but they're in the room, and you might hear them sing. I don't know. But uh, we're so glad that they're here. And uh, Tommy and Dave are working on some, uh, some things for the, uh, the sound system. Very thankful for those guys. So anyway, we're glad that you're here. Glad that uh, all of you are with us. And uh, missed you last week. I was over in Kentucky working with the Christian Appalachian Project there. Had a wonderful week, uh, but glad to be back home. So uh, we start as we have been starting. I, I thought about this today. We've been doing this Facebook Live thing for a little over a year now and uh, as it relates to the pandemic. So uh, what uh, what started off as temporary has become semi-permanent. So we'll, we'll see. All right. So we've been starting with Sweet Hour of Prayer, and we'll do that again. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my Father's throne make all my wants and wishes known. In seasons of distress and grief, my soul has often found relief and oft escaped the tempter's snare by thy return, sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, Thy wings shall my petition bear to him whose truth and faithfulness engage the waiting soul to bless. And since he bids me seek his face, Believe his word and trust his grace. I'll cast on him my every care and wait for thee, sweet hour of prayer. All right. Thank you so much. Glad to welcome you all here. I saw Cliff fly by and Roger and Flo and Charity and I think Dale Hernan is on there so glad to welcome all of you here if you have a, a prayer request that you'd like to share and you don't mind put it on to Facebook I think Debbie will she has her phone so she'll read that off uh, when we get around to prayer time all right uh, in terms of announcements so I went through the, uh, the newsletter and uh, I called out all of the announcements so we'll see if I get everything so you know that May the 7th is a Friday. And on Friday, May the 7th, we're planning to have a movie night. And one of the best things about movie night is hot dogs. Hot dogs. We're gonna have hot dogs uh, six o'clock on May the 7th. And then uh, at seven o'clock, we'll be showing the movie, The Case for, the Case for Christ. It's about Lee Strobel. It's, a, uh, I understand, an excellent movie. Thank you, Terry Ponton, for working on that. And uh, so May the 7th, and we hope to show it outside. Our technical Tommy there will, will get us straightened out. We pray, and we're very thankful for uh, our folks because I don't know anything about technology. And I'll tell you a secret. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Uh, so as long as we have Tommy and Dave, and hopefully we'll get some more. We need some more help technology-wise. All right, May the 14th and 15th is our men's retreat. Uh, we didn't have it last year because of COVID. We were able to have it this year. Uh, so the sign-up is on the foyer. Uh, I believe it's uh, $70 if you stay in the cabin, $90 if you stay uh, in a lodge room. And if you're just there for meals, it's $15 a meal. So love to have you guys go with us, and, and uh, that would be wonderful. 
if you're checking into Facebook, I think Doris checks into Facebook. Debbie checks in once in a while. I think Jerome does once in a while. So we thank you guys for doing that. Uh, I don't do it as often as I should. But this, uh, this month, when we check into Facebook, every six check-ins is a day of care through Compassion International. I don't know of any uh, ministry that I enjoy supporting more than Compassion International. Over the years, I think Debbie and I have had three students and you guys have okay so uh it's a wonderful wonderful thing and uh i encourage you to support compassion international and you can do so by just checking in on facebook then stephen ministry uh we have an announcement about that uh there will be uh stephen ministry training this summer for new stephen ministers uh we're excited about that uh possibility so if you feel led to be a Stephen minister, we'd love to welcome you to that ministry. See Brother Roger or Iris Lehman, and they will get you the information about that. Pray for Stephen Ministries. Uh, we've had, uh, you know, COVID has had this toll on our ministers as well. So I ask you to pray for Stephen Ministries. Uh, the Terms of Life group, there are a couple life groups going on here at First Baptist now. The first one is our men's group uh, on Sunday mornings at 8 o'clock. Brother Jerome is a faithful member there. And uh, we have pancakes, we have coffee. Uh, lately, we've had eggs and sausage. So uh, that's a cool thing. So uh, we also have Bible study and prayer time together. We'd love to have you join us for men's retreat or the men's uh, small group on Sunday mornings. Uh, also, the, uh, the ladies group is on Tuesdays uh, at 7 o'clock in the Portable. Uh, Stephanie Kropp is leading that, and I think they're just having a wonderful time uh, in the ladies group. We do need a, 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 some more uh, life groups uh, praying about that. Uh, hopefully that uh, we can start uh, at least one more life group uh, sometime this summer. So stay tuned uh, for that information. Awana, you don't hear any kids around, right? It's awful quiet in here. That's because Awana has uh, ended for the year. Uh, boy, we had a wonderful year of Awana in spite of COVID and just very thankful for that. Thank you parents who allowed your children to come to Awana, uh, I do appreciate it, and uh, I know you were blessed. <laughs> um, it'll start up again in the fall, and SMIDEC is still meeting. Well, they'll keep meeting until uh, May the 23rd on Sunday evenings. We also have a Sunday school class on Sunday mornings. Listen, we have some great leadership uh, in, uh, in SMIDEC, and I know that not this Sunday, but Sunday week, uh, I volunteered the men to make breakfast. So uh, we're going to be making breakfast. And if it's just me and Jerome, we'll be making breakfast. Hopefully we'll get a few more guys to help us and hope Jerome can come. So uh, that's Mother's Day weekend. That's true. You're right. Oh, you'll be away. Uh, Jerome can't help me. Maybe you guys. But yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, I might have to replan that schedule. I'm, stay tuned for that. We might... Uh, we might bump it back a week uh, because they might not be meeting on Mother's Day. I, I don't know. That, that's, that's probably a, a dicey thing. So aren't you glad you tuned in to get this uh, running conversation about things? Not very, not very smooth. All right. Uh, missionary for the week is, are, is the Estrada family, missionaries to Spain. Uh, if you read their reports, and I've read their recent report, they've had a varied ministry uh, from in-person contact to Zoom, a lot of online Bible studies. Uh, the Daniel Estrada family will be with us in June, uh, the Sunday after Father's Day. So uh, be here at church. So hopefully uh, you'll be able to meet with them then. All right, so that's all the things I had in way of announcements. Any other announcements from you guys? All right, we have crickets. All right, so um, our... our uh, Devotion tonight uh, comes from the book of Galatians, chapter 6. And uh, if you know me very well, you know that uh, I generally like to, to read uh, uh, verses in context, and I often read a whole chapter, and that's uh, it's, it's what we're going to do tonight. Uh, Galatians chapter 6, uh, beginning with verse 1. Uh, Paul writes, Brothers and sisters... If someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, 
or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens in this way, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Everyone should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. For each one should carry their own load. Nevertheless, the one who receives instructions in the word should share all good things with their instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in well-doing or in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. See what large letters I use as I write to you with my own hand. Those who want to impress people by means of the flesh are trying to compel you to be circumcised. The only reason they do this is to avoid being persecuted for the for cross of Christ. Not even those who are circumcised keep the law, yet they want you to be circumcised that they may boast about your circumcision in the flesh. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I unto the world. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is the new creation. Peace and mercy to all who follow this rule to the Israel of God. From now on, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. All right, so that was the, uh, I was reading the NIV version. I just thought this, uh, just it's a marvelous passage, and there's a lot of things to comment on there, and I'm sure you guys don't want me to com go commenting for 45 minutes or so. Um, I think Dale has a prayer request there. Okay, so uh, just the idea, you know, this is Paul writing to the, the churches in Galatia. It, it's, it's during a period of time that he suffered a great deal of persecution. He has uh, experienced uh, uh, loneliness. He has experienced uh, uh, times of uh, just persecution and trouble. Uh, he's, uh, he's experienced a lot of different things on the mission field. And uh, uh, so you kind of see that uh, as you read this chapter. So he starts with, uh, brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves or you also may be tempted. I think sometimes uh, we, uh, we get involved in correcting people and sometimes uh, we use God's Word as a hammer rather than... Uh, something gentle and kind. And you know, how many of us sin? We all do, right? We all come short. We all, we all have trouble. We all have issues. We have besetting sins. And it's much easier for me to see your sin than it is for me to see my sin. Now, that doesn't mean we should ignore each other's troubles or in each other's shortcomings. He says, if someone is caught in this, you know, I thought about John chapter 8, the woman caught in adultery. That's John chapter 8, right? And the Pharisees uh, brought this woman uh, before Jesus and those that were gathered with him. And he said, look, they said, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jesus, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. And the law says she should be stoned to death. But what, should, what do you say? And you remember reading the passage there, Jesus stooped down and he began to write on the ground. And when he got up from writing on the ground, I have no idea what he wrote, but he said, you who is without sin, cast the first stone at her. Then what happened? 
one by one, they all left. And Jesus looked at her and said, woman, where are those that accuse you? Is there no one to accuse you? She said, no one, Lord. And I, this is a verse that just sticks in my mind. Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. So uh, the idea uh, of being caught in a sin, uh, you know, we all sin, we have trouble. So it, we should be willing to restore those uh, who are having a, a trouble with a particular sin. But how, what should be our posture toward that? He said, rest, restore that person gently. It's often not what you say, but how you say it. You know, uh, I can have a, a very difficult conversation with a person, and if I approach it with humility, if I, if I approach it with quietness and a, and a meek and a humble spirit, it's much, it's much uh, easier to come to an understanding than it is if I go in yelling. Because if you start yelling at me, uh, the, the, the door comes down and the conversation is over. So if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit, restore that person gently. But the warning is, watch yourselves. You know, Jesus said, it's okay to, to talk to that person about the splinter in his eye, but remember, you, have, you might have a beam in your own eye. So understand that we all come short. Understand that we all are sinners. And yes, we help each other through life. Isn't that the wonderful thing about fellowship? We help each other through life, but we do so gently with the understanding that we all uh, are, ha are, have a weakness and trouble. So uh, carry each other's burdens. One of the greatest blessings about being part of a church fellowship is understanding one another and carrying one another's burdens and, and uh, being there when trouble comes. And, you know, Paul writes, uh, uh, oh, you know, I just I forget where he wrote it. Uh, uh, but he said, weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice. Uh, you know, it's in Philippians. And so, uh, you know, the idea is to, to look beyond our own troubles and help each other carry burdens in, in the same manner that helps us. So uh, if, you, if you help carry someone else's burdens, you fulfill the law of Christ. When I saw that, that phrase, the law of Christ, uh, I thought about, you know, the, the lawyer who, who asked Jesus the question, oh, Lord, what is the greatest commandment? And he said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. And, the, and Jesus said, that's right. Uh, and the second is like unto it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So uh, we fulfill the law of Christ. And really the, the royal law is love God and love people. So in the way we fulfill that is by helping each other carry burdens. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves, right? So if we think that we're all that in a piece of chocolate cake, no, we all come short. We all need a Savior. We all need forgiveness, and we all need help. And uh, that's the beauty of, uh, of uh, uh, a healthy church fellowship. So if anyone thinks there's something, you know, Paul wrote to the, uh, to the Philippians, uh, you know, esteem others better than yourself. And uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, being willing to humble yourself uh, in the sight of God. So uh, he says each one, each one of us should test their own actions. You know, God, is what I'm doing, is it, is it something that's pleasing to you? Is the things that I say, are those things pleasing to you? Are my actions pleasing to you? And, you know, I, th I think about uh, uh, that passage uh, in, uh, in Psalms where it says, Cleanse my heart, O God, and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. And so, uh, uh, man, when we, when we compare our thoughts to God's, we all come short. Uh, so... Uh, Test ourselves uh, uh, in the sight of God. 
Uh, then, then he writes, then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. Um, you know, we, that's, a, that's really a, a game that's, uh, when we start comparing ourselves to someone else, we always look for someone uh, who, you know, we consider we're better than that person, right? So we, we'll, uh, we'll, we work out on the comparison scale. The problem is when we compare ourselves to Jesus, we all come short. So uh, we all need help. So uh, test your actions, and, and then we can, uh, uh, we can understand uh, where we come from in ourselves. You know, there's a, there's a kind of a seemingly contradicting uh, statements here about uh, should we carry one another's loads or should we carry our own load? And the answer is yes. Uh, we're all designed to carry a load. Uh, but there are times in our lives uh, when we need help, right? And so there are times in our lives when I can help Jerome carry a load. And there are times when he can help me carry a load. And in that way, we, uh, we help one another. And that's what uh, good church fellowship is all about. Then he says in verse 7, don't be deceived. This is a great. This is a law of the of the of the uh, of planting and harvesting. God cannot be mocked. I used to say, you can pull the wool over, uh, you know, some people. What Abraham Lincoln says, you can fool uh, uh, all the people some of the time, and some of the people all the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. And the fact is, you can't fool God any of the time. And uh, so. But don't be deceived. God is not mocked. He, he understands what pretense is. He understands what, uh, you know, he talked to uh, the nation of Israel. He said, look, I'm not interested in offerings uh, and the sacrifice of rams and, and your holy days. What I'm really looking for is your heart. And so uh, don't be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatever we sow, that's we, that is what we reap. We sow to the flesh to feed the, uh, to please the flesh. Uh, we're going to reap uh, that whirlwind. We sow to the Spirit. We will from the Spirit reap eternal life. So and this is the verse that got me started today, that, that I came to this particular passage. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. And so I ask you the question, have you ever become weary in doing well? And I asked myself that question today because I was a little bit weary. And, uh, you know, and I was uh, not feeling sorry for myself necessarily. I just tired. And uh, that passage always encourages me not to give up because often uh, the blessing of God is right after the next step. Don't become weary in well-doing. God's going to... God's going to pay dividends on things that we invest for his kingdom. And sometimes we don't see it right away. Listen, we were blessed Sunday to have a family added to our fellowship. What a, what a glorious thing that was. And, uh, but it had been a, a little while before that had happened. But what does God require of us? He did, what he requires of us is faithfulness. Be not weary in well-doing. In due season we shall reap if we faint not. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. And then the last part of the, uh, of the chapter, Paul, is, you know, if you, if you look at the book of Galatians, uh, the, the overriding subject is uh, the question, shall we compel Gentile believers to be circumcised like the Jews are in order to be saved. We know that there was a test case, went to uh, uh, the Jerusalem church in Acts chapter 15, and the resounding uh, 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 result of that test case was, no, we, sh we don't, don't compel uh, Gentile believers to become uh, Jewish uh, in their culture in order to become Christian. God does not require that. What does God require? It's just our heart, and it's just seeking him uh, for the forgiveness of sins. So uh, this last uh, section goes back to that argument uh, uh, about shall we, shall we circumcise Gentile believers uh, for them to be saved. Uh, earlier, Paul wrote, by, for by grace are you saved through faith. Is not that not of yourselves, a gift of God, not of works, 
lest any man should boast from the book of Ephesians. So here we go in the last section there. I'm trying not to uh, spend too much time here. He says, uh, those who want to impress people by means of the flesh are trying to compel you to be circumcised. The only reason they do this is to avoid being persecuted for the cross, cross of Christ. You see, what was happening was uh, uh, these Jewish believers uh, were, were, were seeing Gentiles come into the church and there are those in the synagogue who had not trusted Christ, who were, uh, who, were, who were unbelievers, were chastising those Jewish believers because their church was receiving uh, Gentile believers uh, as they would anyone else, but they're not compelling them to be circumcised. And, and uh, uh, the Christian faith was really an outgrowth from the Jewish religion. So Paul writes, he said, the only reason that they're t doing that is to avoid themselves being persecuted by the outsiders for the cause of Christ. Listen, not even those who are circumcised keep the law. Isn't that the truth? That yet they want you to be circumcised so that they might boast in you. They said, look what we did. We have all these converts from Gentiles and their circumcises and now they're part of the Jewish religion. Well, it was totally, totally done in the flesh. Paul says, may I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Listen, there's no boasting in the cause of Jesus. It's only pointing to Jesus and say he is the only one worthy of our praise. And this is what Paul is trying to get across. Peace and mercy to all those who follow this rule, to the Israel of God. You know, <laughs> Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just, so, uh, you know, uh, spiritual Israel involves a lot of gen uncircumcised Gentiles, but uncircumcised in the flesh, but circumcised in the heart, Paul writes. From now on, you hear Paul's weariness, I think, in this sentence. From now on, let no one cause me trouble. A lot of people are causing Paul trouble. From now on, let no, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. And uh, if you read about Paul's life, the things that he went through, uh, you know, beatings and uh, stonings and shipwreck and snake bite, uh, he went through a lot. Uh, let me just clear something up. Uh, just because you get saved doesn't mean that your life will be easy. In fact, it might be hard. You might suffer persecution in some ways for the cause of Christ. But it does mean you have a Savior who will go with you through those trials. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. All right. Thank you so much for uh, putting up with me uh, with that <laughs> short, long devotion. And uh, I do have several prayer requests, and thank Diana for uh, sending me these today. And uh, I know Debbie has at least one other, and maybe Ralph and uh, Jerome, and not Ralph, Jerome and Doris, they might have others. All right, so I guess I, I mentioned Ralph because we need to pray for Ralph and Helen Burdett. Uh, I think maybe they're a little bit better. Uh, they are fighting the COVID uh, virus, so pray for them. Uh, their son, Gene, in Florida uh, is had a real bad reaction to COVID. I, he may have some lingering results, so pray for him. Uh, I think he is better. Uh, Gene's wife, Karen, mother, her mother, her name is Jane Brobst, who li they live in Pennsylvania. And they had uh, kind of one of those freak accidents. Uh, they were doing yard work uh, in their yard and the truck jumped out of gear and it hit her and she broke several bones. And uh, she was having surgery today. So we pray that that surgery went well. Pray for Brother Jerome. He's sitting right across from me. You can't see him. 
but Brother John's going to have surgery on Friday, and uh, hopefully it'll just be in and out, but it's a procedure, and it could be very uncomfortable, and so pray for Brother Jerome. I know he appreciates your prayers. Our friend Dick Wells uh, had surgery today, and um, I think that surgery went well. I, thought, I saw a post on Facebook. You know, that's the reason I like Facebook is just follow up with people. I know there's some things on there that make you mad and, uh, and cause you trouble, but uh, it's good to, to catch up with people. So pray for Dick Wells. Our friend Nora uh, is in the facility Glade Valley up in Walkersville. I talked to her today. Uh, Nora really needs your prayers. Would you pray for Nora? Uh, also on Saturday, uh, we'll be having a memorial service for uh, the Moore family at the passing of their daughter, Laura. And um, so that'll be Saturday, here Saturday at church at noon. And uh, we're planning to stream that on Facebook for those that can't make it here. Hopefully we'll broadcast to the parking lot as well for those of the family and those that loved uh, Laura. So pray for that service, pray for that family. Uh, did hear from Diana today. Uh, she's got she's getting a new Diana crop new medication for her sciatic pain, so we pray for that that it, that would be effective. Uh, and John is having an X-ray on his right leg to investigate the cause of the pain that he's having. He's also getting a new medication. We did hear from Denise Bittinger, uh, and of course we're praying for her daughter, uh, her pregnancy, and also. Uh, she let us know that her coworker Tara's surgery uh, was successful. So that's the prayer request that I had. You have others? Uh, Lisa Thompson. What's that? Lisa. Lisa. Oh, oh, Lisa. our Lisa. Yeah, Lisa. <laughs> our dear friend Lisa, all the way on uh, the left coast. Uh, she uh, <laughs> she had uh, she had surgery, right? Uh, and she came came out well. And she she, said she's Lisa Keeling, yeah, she's yeah. a great friend. And uh, so they're waiting for the, you know, you're waiting for the results biopsy. from the biopsies and yeah. stuff like that. So pray for her. Uh, they'll be traveling also next week. Uh -huh. Good plan, and uh, um, and Gail said Oral has a follow up with the arm surgeon tomorrow. Okay. Um, Brother Earl Oral, Oral, Oral Herndon. Uh, fell fell off a ladder and he broke I don't know how many oh, bones, uh, and he does have a follow up with the okay. arm surgeon. Um, pray he will be able to use his arms more. He has been walking with a walker, and they were just you know praising God for that progress. Amen, amen, brother <laughs> Oral. If you if you're listening, we're praying for you, and <laughs> and uh, we're hope uh, hopeful that you get more mobility. All right. Any, anybody else? Yes. I was talking to uh, my son, Alan Brown, who is in the castle in Mount Airy. If oh. you know where that's located. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. His wife, Claudette, had just gotten out of the hospital last week. It was kind of a mysterious thing, so I'm not sure what was going on. I'm not even sure if they know completely. Uh, he did not mention COVID, but both of them are saved, and he asked me, to put Claudette on Advent. Amen. All right. So uh, if you didn't hear that, Claudette Brown yes. from Mount Airy, and uh, they know the Lord, and yes. she, she'd like to be on our prayer chain. What, a, what a, a gift it is to pray for brothers and sisters in Christ. Goes right back to that verse. Good. All right. Anyone else? All right. Well, we're going to have prayer together, and, you know, I didn't write those other ones down, so... Uh, Pray for, uh, pray for my recall as we, as, and if I don't recall, we know God knows who they are. Father, we come to you tonight just thankful. Lord, thankful for fellowship. Thankful for our church family. Lord, I just want to personally thank you for the family that joined with us this past week. It was a great gift from heaven for me, uh, uh, an encouragement. I pray that you bless their family. Father, uh, I pray for uh, services this coming Lord's Day, that your will would be done. Uh, Father, that you would draw people to yourself. And, and if there's someone who has never uh, given their heart to Jesus, that this would be the, the time. Lord, thank you for uh, 
uh, Dave and Tommy working on uh, uh, the sound system uh, and uh, working on the video uh, that we have here at church. Very grateful for those men and others who serve in ministries all over uh, uh, our church family. Very grateful for those, for everyone who serves here. And Father, I lift up those requests that we made uh, for prayer tonight. Pray for Ralph and Helen Burdett. Father, I pray that you just lay your healing hands upon them. Father, that they would be recovered from uh, the virus. And uh, Father, that it would just... Uh, it would just leave them just as quickly as it came, and, and uh, I pray that there would be no lingering results. I pray for your servant, Gene Burdett, Lord, and I pray for uh, good health for him and recovery. And uh, Father, I pray that you'd bless the doctors as they care for him, give them a good plan. And Father, I just pray that, uh, that you would heal him of, of uh, any of the lingering results from that. Also for, for Karen's mother, Jane, uh, who had this uh, kind of weird accident, and she broke several bones. And uh, Lord, I just pray that the surgery was successful and that you'll bless her in recovery. Bless Brother Jerome, Lord, our dear friend, and I pray, the Lord, that you'll bless him as he goes into this surgery. Just give him peace of mind and heart and just come near to him, Lord, and, and let him know that, uh, that you're there with him. Bless the hands of the surgeon and, and those that care for him, Lord, and I just pray for the, the best possible result. I pray for Dick Wells and, and uh, continued recovery for Dick. And I pray, Lord, that, uh, that you will just be with him in rehab and, and that he would just be fully recovered soon. I pray the same for Nora, Father, as she's in, up in Glade Valley uh, in Walkersville. And, and Father, just come near to her heart and, and uh, encourage her. And, and I just pray, Lord, uh, that she might be recovered from this situation. Lord, that, that you would uh, come near to her and restore her. I do pray for the Moore family uh, uh, at the loss of Laura last uh, November, and uh, they're going to have the service this, this Saturday. And, and I just pray that that's a, a wonderful time, wonderful fellowship for that family as they remember uh, their dear loved one. And there are others, Lord, that we know who have, lo have loved ones who have passed, and we know that that's a difficult, difficult time, Lord. And we just pray for your Holy Spirit to, uh, to come near and provide grace and comfort and help uh, and it's, we know that we cannot uh, erase uh, the grieving process, but, Lord, that you can carry us through it. And so, Father, we pray for that. We pray for Diana, Lord, uh, that the new medication would be helpful for her pain and that she'd be restored, and also for Brother John and, uh, Father, for the pain in his right leg. We just pray, Lord, that you would remove that from him. Thankful for Tara's surgery being successful, Lord. Continue to bless her and encourage her. Uh, we pray for Miss Brown, Lord, uh, from Mount Airy, Lord, that you just uh, just lay your hands of peace and grace upon her and thank you for their family and the knowledge that they know you. Uh, Father, for, for Lisa, we're thankful for her and bless her as she continues to recovery. Give her peace of mind and just clear her of any issues and problems, Lord, and lead her with your strong hand. <coughs> we pray for Oral, Lord, Oral Herndon. Uh, we're just so thankful, Lord, that he uh, is recovering. Continue to bless his recovery, Lord, and encourage him during this difficult time. Uh, Father, thank you for our church family and those that have joined us on Facebook. Uh, Father, I just pray that you'll, you'll bless our fellowship, and uh, we're careful to praise you, Lord. We're looking forward to a great day of worship and praise on Sunday, and uh, thankful, Lord, for all of you've done for us. Uh, Lord, uh, I pray that you'll encourage us to continue uh, to not be, not be weary in well-doing, but to continue on knowing that uh, the results are not in our hands. Uh, it's up to us to, uh, to be steady. It's up to us to be faithful, and you will bless faithfulness. So help us in that journey. Uh, forgive us of the times that we come short, for we often do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you so much. For joining us and uh, we always have a closing song and uh, when I'm fully prepared I picked out I pick out the song in advance and when I'm not uh, fully prepared we do what we're going to do tonight and that is I'm going to flip through the book until I find something that just I think that we can sing and uh, of course there's a lot of songs in here that we can sing And some that we can't sing. All right, now this is high. All right, so I'm just telling you now, this is high. 
<coughs> it's called He Lives. I serve a risen Savior, He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever men may say. I see His hand of mercy, I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need Him, He's always near. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian, lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Amen. And Miss Diana, if you're still listening, if you're watching this broadcast, I want you to know that Jerome has a great singing voice, and he should join our choir when we can do cantatas again. All right. I love you all. Take care. Thanks for joining us. We will see you the next time.